Hi, and welcome to another episode of Do It The Smart Way. Today, we're going to look at the auxiliary drive test of our TPEM control. In this test, the system checks whether the actuators and auxiliary drives are addressed and moved correctly. But as always, here are some safety rules. To prevent components from being damaged, make sure that the machine has been pre-lubricated for three minutes. The generator set must be stopped, the manual operation mode must be selected, and the emergency stop must not be active. To start the test, let's go to our simulation room. Some tests require audio or visual testing. For this, the TPEM touch panel should be located close to the generator set. If this is not possible, you need to conduct the test together with a colleague. Today, we're going to look at five tests. Of course, there are many more tests, which you can find in the job card in your operating manual. So let's activate the test mode. We see that the generator sets are in manual mode. The machine has been stopped. The emergency stop has not been actuated. We go to the functional group service. In the engine tab, we click the submenu starter and switch on the test mode. When the test mode is switched on, you can see test mode and a wrench icon up here in the status bar. First, we test the starter by clicking starter and then on at the bottom right. In this way, the pre-lubrication pump is activated in order to get the oil pressure. When the pre-lubrication pump is active and pressure is on hand, a green icon appears down here and a check mark up here. Now we can start the starter with the press and hold button. We see the speed going up. We can hear the typical sound of our starter in the engine room. We release the press and hold button and the speed drops. We switch off the pre-lubrication pump and proceed with the test of the throttle flap. I select the tab for the throttle flap and click calibrate down here. The throttle flap should fully open up once and be closed again. 100% and back to 0%. The throttle flap has been calibrated. Now I can enter a certain percentage on the scale, let's say 50%. I activate this with the check mark and can see that the value of 50% is actually reached. This would be the right time to go to the engine room and check whether 50% are set on the actuator. I go back to 0% and close the flap. The flap has been closed. The target is 0%. The throttle flap test has thus been successfully completed. Now let's continue with the gas mixer test. For this, I select the row for the gas mixer, abbreviated as GAM. First, I press calibrate in order to prevent the gas mixer from moving to the mechanical stop position. In the background, you can hear the gas mixer moving. It needs to be fully opened once and fully closed once. Once the gas mixer has been calibrated, a green check mark appears down here in the window and I can start moving to the start position manually and take a look at the gas mixer in order to make sure that the start position has been reached. I close the gas mixer again. The gas mixer is closed. I fully open it once. Here you can see the steps increasing. At 4,000 steps, the gas mixer is fully opened. Then I close it by setting it to zero steps. This icon shows that the mixer has stopped at the leanest position. The gas mixer test has thus been completed. Now let's continue with the gas train check. For this, we switch to GTR, which stands for Gas Train, and select the gas shutoff valves. 
For safety reasons, one click only opens one valve at a time. Then I commence with the first valve. Here I get the green feedback. In the engine room, I can check this visually. I release the press and hold button. The valve is closed. Then I test the second one. Here too, I get green feedback. So yes, the valves open and close. Our gas train test has thus been completed. Next, we test the three-way valve of our mixture cooling circuit. For this, we toggle the category and go to MCC for mixture cooling circuit. Select our valve and first move it toward cold. We can now check on site whether the valve duly is closed or open. I stop it at this point and move it back to warm. The green feedback confirms that the valve is moving. I switch it back off, knowing that my three-way valve is operable. This test has thus also been completed. Finally, we need to switch off the test mode. It's simple. At the top, next to test mode, I click off. All values are reset. At the top of my screen, ready to start is displayed. I go back to the operation menu, from where I can ramp up my generator set. So this was the auxiliary drive test of our TPEM control. Thanks for watching and see you at the next episode of Do It The Smart Way.